Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Walker here. I'm here to give you your video for the week, the week of May 11th through the 15th. I can't believe we're almost halfway through May. And then our weird school year is going to be over. That's crazy. Let's go ahead and see what we have for this week. And then I'll be calling you and talking to you more about your activities. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with the stuff that we have in store for you this week. Um, again, if you need help with anything, um, you want to reach out on YouTube first, see what kind of videos I have and Mr. LaBelle have on there. I'll talk more about YouTube later when it comes to science. Um, for reading this week, last week I said that you were done working in your benchmark reader and we have not given you another one to work on. So instead, we're going to be doing something a little different in reading this week. You're going to be focusing on a one-page story called Jill's Glasses. It's just one page, it has a picture of some glasses on it. And for Monday, all you're going to be doing is reading it. Now, if you want to listen to me read to it, um, you can look in the comments section below in this video and I will have an audio link to me reading that story if you wanna follow along. I'll also try to remember to send a separate link on our Remind app to your parents if you have that texting app and you can listen to it that way as well. But if you don't, you can just click down in the comments and see a link that I will put in there for the audio file as well, or just read it on your own. You don't have to listen to me read it. It's only if you want to. But on Tuesday and Wednesday, it's a story about a girl who got fun of when she, at school when she was wearing some glasses. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, I want you to have some fun. Um, in the story, her friend makes not, she, sorry, she doesn't make it. She wears an odd pair of glasses to school to make her friend feel better about the eyeglasses that she does have to wear. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, um, I want you to use the construction paper that I have inside of your packet to create some glasses. Like what would, your, what would you make for your friend to make them feel better? Would you go super cool? Would you go really wacky? Would you make them about a sports team? I only had enough room to give you two colored pieces of paper. You can use crayons, markers, whatever you got on them. If you don't wanna use my stuff and you wanna use stuff that you have at home, go for it. Maybe you have a cardboard box that you wanna chop up. Do that, sky is the limit. I only gave you a few supplies because that's all that I could fit, but you can use anything that you want. And on Wednesday, if you can remember, take a picture of yourself and you can either send it to me through on Remind or if you want to email it to me, um, I can, uh, I'll give you my email address later in the week when I call you and you can send that to me too. Then at the end of the week on Thursday, you're going to be looking on the back side of Jill's glasses and the back side of the story. And this worksheet is here. And I want you to break the story up into the beginning, middle and end. Now in the boxes where it says the words beginning, middle and end, those are the boxes where I want you to write two or three sentences that explain the beginning and then explain the middle and explain the end. And for each of those boxes where you write two or three sentences right next door, I want you to draw a picture about it. So when you explain the beginning to me in two or three sentences, I want you to draw a picture next to it that shows me what you think the beginning looked like. I don't give you any other pictures in the story. So I kind of want you to use your imagination. How do you see that playing out? So that's what you have this week for reading. And then on Friday, you're finishing up work and working on Lexia if you have access to that. In writing, we're still gonna focus on this whole Molly's glasses thing. I'm not gonna go to a whole nother writing topic. On Monday, you're gonna be thinking about three chunks of characters in the story. I want you to think about Molly. That was her best friend. I want you to think about the main character, Jill. And then I also want you to think about the students in the class, kind of like, the students as one big thing, not individual students, but one big thing. What were the students like? And I'm asking you to describe them by thinking of one character trait. Now, over here in green, I'm explaining to you that a trait is one word that describes someone's personality. So if you could think of Molly in one word, what's one word that would describe Molly? You might think of more than one, but all I need you to give me is what, what is one of those? What's one of those words that describes Jill? Not about what she looks like, but about the kind of person she is. Was she nice? Was she shy? Was she mean? Was she a bully? Those are all words that could be used to describe a person's trait. Now the students, what is one word that you would use to describe all of the other students in the class? 
That's the one word I want you to give me. Then you're going to use that word in a sentence that describes that person's trait. Now, I gave you an example here on the screen of a person I don't want you to tell me about. I'm going to use it as an example, and it's Mrs. Smith, their teacher. Now, I used her trait might have been stern. The story doesn't tell us much about the teacher. So I'm just going to imagine if the story kept going, maybe what the teacher would be like, what would I be like if it was me? So I kind of made up this part, but it gives you an idea. I said that Mrs. Smith was stern. That means she, you know, making sure they're following the rules and, you know, being kids of character. So the sentence that I wrote about Mrs. Smith was, Mrs. Smith was stern with the class after they teased Jill. So that way that sentence explains how did she use that trait or where did that trait come into play? Why am I ex describing her as a stern person? Well, because she talked to the class after they teased Jill. Kind of helps me understand why you might have chosen that word, okay? Now, Tuesday and Wednesday, um, those two days go together. It's one assignment and I'm giving you two days to do it. I just want you to explain to me what did you do when you made those glasses for the art project? Um, the, there's three main things I want to know. I want to know what kind of materials you were using. I want to know when it's asking, like, what are you adding on your glasses? I'm asking, like, what's the design? Did you make them a Chuck E. Cheese glasses or did you do something different? Did you make them a Pleasant Bear glasses? Did you make them about Phineas and Ferb? Did you make them about Star Wars? Like, what kind of glasses did you make? What was the overall theme and design? Did you add special things onto them? Finally, I just want to know, how do you think these glasses are going to help Jill feel better? Are you trying to make her laugh? Are you trying just to make some glasses that kind of look like hers? I don't know. Um, I want you to explain to me why you made your glasses look the way that you did. That's what you're doing Tuesday and Wednesday. On Thursday, you're going to your Kids Learn Workbook. It's a totally different topic. It's like, we're done with Jill's glasses. Here's something else to do. And it's just about writing a postcard. I'm gonna let that be optional. I'm gonna let reading and writing this week mainly be about your Jill's glasses project because I think it's fun and I think you'll enjoy doing it. If you wanna do page 74, please be my guest. You could cut it out and actually mail it to somebody if you want, but I'll leave that up to you. In math, same as I've been doing every week, there's two assignments for every single day, but I've put a yellow star next to the assignments that I think are the most important or the ones that I really want to make sure that you do. So I'm going to kind of look at each page while I'm talking to you about them right now. So as I open up to page 67, I am seeing that page 67 in your Kids Learn workbook are four word problems. Now I will tell you that all four of these word problems are either addition or subtraction. So I expect that by now, at this point in third grade, you are doing addition and subtraction correctly. Now, a couple weeks ago, when you turned in work to me, I talked to a few of you about making sure you use the golden sentence when you're subtracting. If I have blank, can I subtract blank? When you are looking at word problems in this um, assignment, and it's a subtraction problem, please make sure you are asking yourself the golden sentence. Because if you don't have enough, you're going to have to go to the next place value to find some more. On day two, you have two pages there. I want you to focus on page 71. Page 71 is going back to adding, which we haven't done for a little bit. But this time, you're going to be adding three numbers, one, two, three, all in a long column. Now, sometimes I, I see students who will add the first two numbers together, then they'll take that answer and add it to the third one. You can do that or you can add all three numbers together, but I will tell you, you are regrouping in this one. So you need to make sure you remember how to regroup. If you don't, I have a red dot next to this assignment, which means you can find a video on Mr. LaBelle's YouTube channel for help with addition. On day three, we are going to spend on day three, day four, and day five, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you are going to be doing worksheets in our extra math packet that we sent home with you. And they're all about area. Now, area, you might remember, is when we have a shape and we're splitting it up into equal size little units, little squares inside of it. And an area is how many units, how many squares does it take to cover up that shape? So on Wednesday, it's really simple. The shapes are drawn. The squares are in there. You're just counting boxes. How many boxes are in that shape? That's how many units. Tell me how many units. So if it's 12, put 12 
units. Make sure you write the word units. That's all you're doing on day three. On day four, on Thursday, the second page in your math packet um, has big squares with pictures shaded in gray on the inside. If you, um, So you're going to want to count only the shaded boxes. It's kind of like fractions, sort of, except I'm not going to have a numerator and a denominator. All I do is count the shaded boxes. So if I see 23 shaded units on that big square, then my area of that shaded picture is 23 units. That's all that I have to do. But I did write in here, skip number 10 and 12 on your worksheet. They're down here at the bottom. And you're gonna wanna cross those out because for whatever reason, they photocopied really light and I can barely see what that picture is and you probably can't either. So cross out number 10, cross out number 12, don't do those. Um, and I think you should be okay to do all the other ones. On day three, which is, I'm sorry, on Friday, day three of area, they're gonna be a little trickier on that day because some of the boxes aren't completely colored in. They're only halfway colored in. So if I have half of a box in one part of the picture and half in another part of the picture, in my imagination, I can put those two halves together and they will equal one unit together. So watch out for those. That is a page that I'm specifically going to be asking you about when I make phone calls this week. Even if you haven't gotten to it yet, I'll probably do at least the first one with you because I wanna make sure you understand how to do Friday's assignment. That's what we have in math. Now, for social studies and science, you will see this week in your lesson plan, I combine them on the same line. And this week, everything's science because next week, guess what it's all gonna be? It's all going to be social studies. So this week for science, we are moving on with forces and motion. I'm going to read the story to you called Sheep in a Jeep. Now in your packet, you will see this page with instructions on how to go to YouTube and find me reading that story, Sheep in a Jeep. You'll get to see the pictures, the whole thing. It'll be on Mr. LaBelle's channel and it will be on my channel. And I have directions there on how you can search and find that if you have not already subscribed to my channel. Um, then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're gonna work on a worksheet that's stapled to this um, first page on how to read the book. The first page looks like this, and you're gonna be building a ramp and you're gonna be using, I hope you have like a small hot wheel car or a small car, but if you don't, I also said that you can use a ball for this activity and the ball can just be the thing that rolls down, even if you don't have a car. Um, if you, um, are going to use a ball or a car, um, you might want to test run the activity a couple times on different floors in your house. Um, it might act differently on carpet than on tile or even cement. So test it out in a few different places for, so you can decide where you want to do this entire activity. Because if you pick the living room for part one, you got to stick with the living room for all of the parts. So you want to choose the one room you want to use for all of those days. So here's what the first page looks like. The second part, part B, begins at the bottom of this page and it continues here on the second page, goes halfway down the next page. Then you see where it says part C, you're gonna do that on Thursday. And then that finishes on the back of the very last page there. So it's a really fun activity where it's gonna be asking you to do something called finding the average. Finding the average. Scientists like to repeat their activities over and over again and then combine their results and then divide them into equal parts to see what were they like, it's like they're rounding. What was it most closely to about every time? So I'm gonna be asking you to do that, but I have directions on how to do it. I wanna see if you can follow those directions and I'm sure if you can't, that you and I can work it out together um, when I call this week. And if you haven't gotten to it yet, let me know and I'll call you back. I'll call you back later in the week to make sure that you get it done well. This is a really fun activity. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, that's it for this week, guys. I look forward to calling you. Um, I'm going to start making phone calls on Tuesday that will give you time to get your work started and to look through your things and to let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to talking to you soon. Stay safe and I'll talk to you this week. Bye-bye.